Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics and I'm back. This time I want to tell you about my experience at Rhode Island Comic Con. Was it worth the trip? Stay tuned for that intro. All right, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about my Rhode Island Comic Con experience for 2023. Uh, if you're not familiar with Rhode Island Comic Con, it's about a medium-sized show that they host um, the first weekend of November here in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. They do it at the uh, convention center and the adjacent um, sporting event arena, which is now called the Amica Pavilion. It used to be the uh, the Dunk, um, but it's it's a huge space. They they take really good advantage of the space from uh, both the convention center and the uh, the pavilion, and there was tons, absolutely tons and tons and tons of vendors there. Um, and the big draw was the celebrities this year. They they focused really on trying to get as many celebrities there as they possibly could. And out of all the years that I've gone. By far, this was the amount of celebrities that I've ever seen there, um, which kind of hinted a, quite a bit on the comic creators. There were not a lot of comic creators there. Um, some that I, that drew that I can think of right off the bat was uh, Kevin Eastman was the, the top draw, and I was going to actually bring one of my books, the last Ronin, to bring with me. But it, it just it's an awkward book if you ever read the book, handled the book, very awkward size, couldn't really you know put it in my store folio, so I'd be like carrying it in my hand, and I didn't really want to do that, so that was unfortunate, um, but uh, he was there, Jay Lee was there, I met him there, I think it was last year, yeah, cool guy, really, really good artist, um, so I didn't bring any books to get signed by him, and uh, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't bring any books at all to get signed, which was unfortunate, because that's, you know, one of the shows outside of Terrificon, which is my favorite show to go to, um, Rhode Island Comic Con, you can bring, you know, a good amount of books there and get signed and the creators are awesome. Um, so that was one of the uh, drawbacks. Um, I think that was in part because of the actor strike. It was probably easier to get more celebrities to come on board versus uh, creators. And uh, it definitely reflected in the ticket price. The ticket prices were much more expensive uh, this year. Then in previous years, I think it was, I think the cheapest was right around, I think 60 bucks and change just for like one day. And um, I went on Sunday, which is the cheapest of the three days. And that's like way higher than what it usually is for the show. Usually it's like 50-ish bucks. Once you start getting up to like 75 bucks is when you're like competing with like New York Comic Con prices. And this by no means is New York Comic Con. <laughs> it's like a medium sized show. So, uh, anyways, I decided I'm going to go to the show either way, make the best of it. I did have some CBCS books to get sent over uh, that I wanted to get reholdered with the new labels and stuff, just to kind of coincide with all the CBCS books that I had, and uh, they were going to be at the show. So, that was the first thing that I ended up making use of my time, was going to the uh, CBCS booth. CGC was not there. Um, I haven't seen, honestly, CGC at a, at a convention in quite some time. They usually tend to use uh, captured collectibles for facilitating services. And um, I didn't have any, like I said, I wasn't going to meet any creators or anything like that. So I didn't really have any point of uh, going to their booth. So I did go to CBCS. And uh, I want to show you the books. Well, I can't show you the books I sent off because I don't have any footage. I didn't take any footage and so forth. But... The books already came back, so which is, I was really shocked. Like I said, the show was from the 4th to the 6th. It's the 18th now recording. It came out, the package came in yesterday, so uh, it came in in less than two weeks. Big package. Uh, I'm going to show you what books I got back, and uh, I'm going to show you the new labels. I haven't personally seen the new labels yet in person. I've only seen them in pictures. And then I can show you in comparison to the previous labels because I didn't send all my CBCS books with me to submit. <coughs> I brought my backpack with me to the show, and I could only bring <laughs> bring in so many books with me. But I wanted to I wanted to take advantage 
of the um, the promotion they were doing for the end of October until this is still ongoing. You know, when this video comes out, you'll still be able to take advantage if you do have CBCS books. But they have till the end of November to uh, send your books over there and get reholdered, and you can um, get the new label. It comes with a new case and so forth. I do like the new cases compared to the previous. They're much, much sturdier. So uh, I'll show you those as well. Um, I think it was eight or nine books. I forget how much, it, you know, I think it came out to like 130 bucks shipped, which was nice. Because um, they were right around 12 bucks a book. So I'm going to show you off the books. And then I will show you the book I ended up picking up in trade, which I'm really excited for. I initially was just going to make this video from the book I traded, but I was honestly surprised how quickly these books came back. All right, let's get into it. So you're going to see a mixture of blue labels and yellow labels. And then I have some comparisons to show you from the previous uh, versions. So I do have a, a yellow, what do you call it, a blue label, universal label. This is um, obviously one of the books I did not submit. This is Sumerian, the Frost, Frost Giant's Daughter, issue number one. This is from Ablaze. And then I do have a signature book. And this is Moon Knight, issue number 25. That first appearance of the uh, Black Spectre. And it's signed by the legendary Bill Sienkiewicz. Also didn't sign this, get this book reholdered. Um, it was on the fence. I was going to get it, but then I decided last second not to. Probably, I don't know. I wanted to kind of like just get my red label books first. Get, you know, get that reholdered more so than everything else. Because I just was not a big fan of those red labels and uh, if you're not familiar with the red labels you can easily google search those you know with certain books it did look nice um especially if it was like a red cover but others they just look hideous there we go so there's one two three four five. Eight books total. And it's packaged really well. I haven't had a submission from uh, TBCS in quite some time. All right. So, like I said, we got eight books total. We're going to see those new labels. And... None of them should have been regraded. They're all just reholders, so I don't know how if CBCS does those or not. But they should all be uh, they should all just be you know reholdered. All right. So first book. Cool. All right. So like I said, it's the first time I'm seeing these new labels. This is uh, let's see, Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, issue number forty four. I'm going to take this out of the uh, bag because so it reduce a little bit of the glare. This is the first appearance of Sidorak. You're not familiar with this book. And it's signed by Roy Thomas. This was a book I did get signed in person. Uh, it does say on their witness signature. And um, it says, first appearance of Sidorak, Juggernaut cover appearance, Galactus Nova Silver Surfer appearance. And it does notate it direct edition. No. These look nice. I actually do not. I do like these much better than the previous. So if you line them up side to side, I do like this one a little better. Um, the top of it. 
Oh yeah, there's a huge difference. If you look at the top of this compared to the um, the previous version, the lettering is just like so much. It's like dimmer. Look at that. You can barely tell from one to the other. Look at that. It's a huge difference. Huge difference. And in the back, it just looks a little bit more clear. I don't know. Let me show you the back. Oh, I, I like them. They look a lot, lot cleaner than the um, the previous, and even the um, the numbering, which obviously it's it's all about the grade. You know, if the grade doesn't look good, it doesn't matter. And uh, look how much larger the 9.8 is versus the 7.5. It's huge. That is huge. And I do like the white there. The white there surrounding the background. And then versus like the all yellow. Not, not a big fan. Yeah. Much, much better if you ask me. But... You know, like I say in my videos, write down in the comments down below what you guys think. Because I'd like to hear your opinions on it as well. Putting that in the wrong, uh, in the uh, different Mylar. Oh yeah, it's a huge difference. And um, the cases, obviously, the newer cases are far, far better than the uh, previous version as well. Um, I do, I almost do like the... Uh, the sturdiness is a little bit better too on the CBCS case versus the um, the uh, CGC case. The new ones, at least, I think they look they they feel a little bit more sturdy. But uh, all right, here's the next book. Next book. Oh, cool! I was just watching this show the other day. There you go, the boys. Here's a uh, Universal label. This is not the first print. <laughs> this is the um, the second printing. You can tell because it has the um, the silver foil on the trade. This is the boys issue number one. Um, ended up picking this up at the uh, local comic shop for like fifty bucks. So I was more than happy to uh, get this reholdered. And uh, just like the, um, I'll put up the blue label just so you guys can see the difference. Look at that is a 9.8. Oh, the hell am I doing? There you go. 9.8. 9.8. Look at that. So much. It just looks so much better. So much better than the previous. Yeah. And even on top, too. Granted, although this is a little different, though. Because I do like the boldness better on this one, which is the previous, versus the current. That is much smaller on the new. I would have preferred more from the older label on the top there to be more bold than the previous. So that was uh, that's a, it's a critique that I wish they made this one. A little bit more bold printing like it did on that one which uh, my previous one did not have that my uh, other other label so that's a that's a critique you know it's good to have critiques so there's uh, the universal label show you my next book oh cool all right this is the um, Batman who laughs this is the Midtown uh, Midtown comics exclusive and um, I ended up getting this. This is signed by um, Scott Snyder. And it's a really cool uh, jock, jock cover. There's a signature there at the bottom. And uh, there you go, 9.8. So all the books are still the same grade. And as I expected, I, I, I wouldn't expect them to regrade them at all. You know, and there's the back. Boom. And so far, all the books, I mean, inside the case look pretty clean. Don't really see any uh, any cracks or anything like that. 
Yeah, everything looks pretty good so far. Yep. Well, that's unfortunate. Their mylar is a little cheap. <laughs> I tried putting the uh, the case back into the mylar and it just tore right up. So <laughs> their mylars are nowhere near as good as uh, as CGCs. Yeah, that's funny. I do have an extra one here, so I can put that one in there. All right. So the uh, next book. Oh, cool. Here we go. This was one of the books that actually got signed by um, Joe St. Pierre at Rhode Island Comic Con a few years back. And um, this is ride number one. This is from uh, Valiant. And um, I believe, yeah, he did the artwork. So Joe St. Pierre, he did the uh, interior artwork. He has his signature there, a nice little signature there in silver. Really cool cover by uh, Bob uh, Layton. I uh, also met Bob Layton there at Rhode Island Comic Con. I think it was that same show. Because I think one of the books is coming up next. So that's cool. 9.6. Wait a second. What's different here? Wait a second. That's interesting. So I'm looking at this label and you notice how it has almost like a bluish silver metallic glow to it this one almost doesn't have that one they're both like metallic right now Oh, this one isn't metallic. That's interesting. So you guys can clearly see that, right? It has that metallic shimmer to it a little bit. And this one's just black. So I don't really know what that's all about. That's interesting. But uh, it's something I just pinpointed when I was looking at those. So uh, very interesting when I notated that. Um, just that the... Uh, the logo there has the shimmer, metallic, you know, I guess foil, whatever it is. Um, and then that other signature one did not from the uh, Batman Who Laughs. Um, anyways, this one is the uh, first appearance of Akiko Minashi. So if you ever read the series, um, I've never read the series, but uh, I was a big fan of the artwork in there. So that's, you know, back in the day, I did get that. Picked up a couple of those and uh, got them signed and graded by uh, CBCS. Uh, we got a few more books left. I think this is the rye I was talking about. Yep, there we go. So um, another one that does not have the the metallic shimmer foil there on the logo like the other one did, and um, this one has just the black. So I'm not really sure. It's very interesting. This is Y Zero uh, from Valiant. First appearance of Bloodshot, of course, and uh, Archer, Armstrong, Solar, Tarak, Eternal Warrior, and Exo Man and War appearance. Basically, everybody under the sun from Valiant, <laughs> and uh, signed by uh, Bob Layton. So, uh, like I said, I ended up getting meeting Joe Sapier and Bob Layton at that show, and then later on ended up getting it. Um, Submitted through CBCS because they were the only ones that were um, doing uh, signature verification. And that's primarily why I sent them off to CBCS. So uh, 9.8, and um, it says on there obviously verified. So cool. Yeah. So I'm just. Uh, just looking at the cases, just making sure everything looks okay. Because if not, I'll have to obviously contact them and uh, let them know. Next book. I recently showed this book off on a video uh, maybe a couple months back. 
one of my more recent pickups. This was um, Knuckles, the uh, the Dark Legion issue number one. This is his uh, first solo series. Yep, first Knuckles in his own title. Um, let's see, and uh, this was signed by uh, Ken Penders. You can see it there. Signed way back when. This was in '98. Um, so this was signed a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there you go, 9.8. And um, also in that, the black. So I'm trying to see if I get any more of those with the, uh, the metal, the metal foil. And I do not. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right. And then the last book that I got for the signature series, my favorite book of the bunch, Immortal Hulk, issue number one. Love this series. This this still to this day my favorite um, Incredible Hulk, you know, story written, artwork, period. Out of all of them, you know, even going back to when Stan was on it. Um, yeah, never read this series. Fantastic um, artwork by uh, Alex Alex Ross. The cover arts he did every single issue, all fifty issues, cover A's, and and more. And uh, written by um, Al Ewing, um, Paul Mounts, Joe Bennett, also doing the artwork. Um, this one was signed by Paul Mounts. I had this signed at uh, Terrificon. You can see his signature there. You don't see too many books signed by him. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And, um, ugh. The last book is my uh, Silver Age book. So, uh, uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going back. That's weird. All right. That they did that with the uh, CBCS book. That one book was uh, that metal foil, and then the rest of them don't have it. Oh, and then that's funny because... Uh, this universal label has the silver logo on it, the, the metal foil logo, and the other ones don't. That's hilarious. I, I have it's no rhyme or reason to it, because I'll show you the other one. So, uh, yeah, so obviously the boys, there you go, just the regular black ink printed and then my last book a little vintage book fantastic four issue number 27 so obviously this is some jack kirby goodness stan lee writing but more importantly this guy right here it's the uh, first doctor strange crossover and um i want to say this is his first full cover appearance. Um, you do see him in a small, like, headshot in um, Strange Tales. Strange Tales? forget what issue. Is it 116 or something like that? But this is, I believe, his first full cover appearance. But uh, a lot of people don't notate that. Um, this came out in uh, 1964. Yeah. Uh, 5.5, which was the same grade that I had sent it off at. But look at the, uh, look at that. It's foily. So, I have, n <laughs> excuse me, no rhyme or reason as to what constitutes the black logo versus a foily logo. I don't know, maybe I have to reach out to CBCS and, and just find out. But, uh. Yeah, so that's my uh, CBCS submission. Um, like I said, that was the first thing I did when I went there, just to get it out of the way, because I wanted to, you know, basically lighten up my backpack to um, so that I could do, you know, lighten load, so I'm not walking around with like ten plus pounds of crap in my backpack. 
and it's not crap, but you know what I'm saying, and uh, make it a little bit more enjoyable walking around with less weight at the show. So um, after that, I was looking around, seeing what vendors were out there, I was talking to a couple friends who went to the show on uh, Friday and Saturday, and I uh, talked to my buddy Chris and, and uh, Murph that were there, and there was a decent amount of vendors. So uh, when I was walking around on Sunday, you know, checked out a few of the booths just to see what they had, um, just to have a good feeling of what's going on there. Um, tons and tons of regular vendors, not comic book stuff uh, like you would expect. This is more like, um, I feel like the show itself is more of like a fan expo nowadays, more than um, like a true Comic-Con, like, uh, like what I consider Terrificon is like more of a, like a comic book specific type of comic show. Uh, Rhode Island Comic Con's veered away from that for quite some time now. And uh, with this year, the amount of celebrities there was just ridiculous compared to, uh, you know, comic creators. Um, but anyways, I still managed to do some hunting, um, was looking for, you know, just something cool, something out of the ordinary. Uh, we had brought three, I think three books with me to trade and ended up, uh, trading two of the books, two of the three to, uh, a dealer that I've, you know, I've dealt with before in the past. Um, I, I believe I, I ended up trading or selling a couple of books to him last year at the show. And, uh, this time I ended up just trading and, uh, I think it traded and I paid a little bit of cash too to get this book. So. I'll show you the book I got. Really excited for this book as well. Never owned this book. But uh, lately I've been trying to pick up some of like the uh, the bigger Bronze Age um, like Marvel key books while I can because the market is so soft right now. And um, ended up picking this book up for a really nice deal. So uh, let's show you the book. Boom! This is, uh, you don't know this book? It's Tomb of Dracula, issue number 10, rated at uh, CGC 5.5. First appearance of Blade, the Vampire Slayer. Um, maybe a year or two ago, I didn't think I'd be able to get this book, just because it had gone so very expensive. Uh, much more expensive than what I thought it, you know, it should have been. And, you know, I, I get it, you know, during the comic boom, it had its, its really its highs. There was talks of um, them having a movie into Phase 5, and then recently it's been scrapped. They're working it back again from the script and so forth. Michelle Ali was threatening to uh, leave the, the, uh, the show itself, so I don't know where this movie is, is on foot right now. But um, for me, it worked out because... The book had gone down quite a bit because of that, and obviously because of the uh, market correction that's still ongoing. So the dealer had this listed for uh, seven fifty. So I ended up trading two books, two graded books that I had. One was the um, I had a strange, um, what was it? Strange Adventures issue number one eighty. It was my uh, 8.0 copy. It was the first appearance of Animal Man. Great book. Um, but right now also a little undervalued. And then I had my Punch Comics 13 uh, at a 0.5. Really low grade. But the, the book was in, in really, really bad shape. So I traded those two books. And I paid just 50 bucks cash for this book. So I thought it was a pretty good trade. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. If it was a good trade, I was very happy to get that, this book for those two books and then just pay a little bit of cash. Um, I was trying to do it just straight up without paying cash, but you know, sometimes you got to give a little both ways as well. So, uh, I completely, completely happy with that, you know, cause we were able to make a deal. I talked to two other vendors, tried picking up this book, you know, or something similar. And they were just like, well, I can't buy the book off you, like the two other books I had, uh, because, 
you know, we were having a, a decent time at the, the show, but we weren't having a great, you know what I'm saying? They weren't selling a lot of good books. So it all depends on the dealer and how the show is going, you know, and that, I think it kind of hurt that it wasn't a big comic show this, this particular year. So, um, it was, but it made it a little bit more dif difficult to like sell, but it made it a little bit easier to trade. And that's when it, you know, I found one dealer that, that ended up, you know, making it work. There was one other dealer that had an 8.0 copy. And I think he was asking like 1600 bucks, which was still a great, great price, you know, considering for that grade. Um, but we just couldn't make the deal work with cash. So that, and that happens, you know, that's the reality of it. But I'm more than happy to get a 5.5 in this book, you know, because just, you know, a year or two ago, this book was well over a thousand dollars. So, um, yeah, great book. Um, I'll have to take a look at the graders notes to see if I can actually improve it or not. But, um, you know, cause I'm not the, <laughs> for some reason <laughs> that 5.5 grade is one of those grades that I just, I am not a big fan of. I don't know what it is, but, um, so I'm going to have to take a look at the graders notes and then see if I could potentially get a bump. Um, but in the meantime, great book to have a uh, great book to, you know, add to your collection. If you're, you know, especially if you're in bronze age horror, which I love bronze age horror. So, uh, yeah, that was it. Um, that was my experience at Rhode Island comic con. I was really surprised to get those CBCS books that quickly, you know, especially from like, it was just two weeks, less than two weeks to get a reholder. So I was really impressed by that. Um, I do like the new labels. There were some, you know, minor flaws that could be improved on still, but um, much, much better than the previous label. So that's what I'm happy about. Um, may have to get those other two books reholdered at, eventually at a later date. But uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit the comment, uh, comment down below. Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, guys. Mark's for Comics.